Lovely light. Although I may have I may have miscalculated. And and by that I mean I definitely miscalculated. So I'm back at a location that I was at in one of the first videos um, when I returned to making these videos and it's the area where I was shooting the windmills and I did mention that I wanted to come back to this particular rock formation for a sunset shot. Now, what I didn't realise is that, so this is east and as we move over here it goes to the west and the sun, so the shot that I had in mind was a nice sun kind of through that gap where I'd be able to get possibly a sun flare or a sun star over these rocks at sunset with a nice sky. I don't ask for much. But as it's turned out, the sun is moving across this way. So the sun is actually directly to my right now. And um, yeah, that's no good. It's not going to be in my photograph. So not all is lost. Um, my intention for this video is to shoot the image show you my post processing then um, for this particular shot because there's going to be a bit of exposure blending there's going to be a bit of focus stacking as well and I'm still going to do that because as you can see we are getting some lovely side light on these rocks and that's what I had in mind um, I just kind of wanted to hopefully get a better sky and the, and behind me here is dark ominous clouds that I do think are going to catch um, when the sun sets and exactly where I want the scene to be the, it's crystal clear skies so yeah the forecast got it completely wrong but anyway I'm going to take the image I'm going to frame it up I'm going to see how we get on and I will show you the post processing side as well Every single cloud has virtually vanished, um, except for the ones behind me, which well, I do not think are going to play a ball. But anyway, we're getting some nice light now. There is nice light on this rock. You might be able to see it just out of frame there. So I'm going to grab a couple of more images. I'm going to focus on the far down rock for this shot because that's where the interest is going to be. That's where the light is. I'm not too concerned about the ones here. Okay, because. Someone's eye is going to be drawn down to those shots. It's not going to be drawn up left to right of the frame. It's meant to go straight down to the rocks with the boulder with light hitting it and then to the landscape below which is now getting illuminated in some fantastic light. So I'm going to stop around and take the photograph. I don't really have anything to say. I just wanted to stand here because the light is nice. I am a bit disappointed, I am. Um, it really was looking promising and there's just, there's nothing now, like there's literally nothing in the sky. And every time I shoot this composition, there's never any cloud in the sky. So it wasn't like me. There is some lovely light though. I um, had to really resist the urge to not put on the telephoto lens and shoot the windmills again <laughs> when they were in such nice light but I said no I'm using a wide angle lens that's all I'm using this evening and yeah which is what I did so the sun has just dipped in now below the horizon not much nothing's gonna happen with the sky because there's no clouds obviously so I'm gonna pack up it's quite cold and I suppose I'll see you in Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and when I got back to the computer and I had a look at the files, I wasn't overly disappointed. Um, I thought the shoot had been a disaster, but it actually wasn't too bad. And the images I've chosen were actually shot during the golden hour, so I didn't even bother using a couple of the images that 
were taken later on in the night. These have some really nice light in them and it was actually one of the few times when we had a bit of cloud in the sky. So that's why I selected these to um to edit and I mean phone silence please. Apologies. I mean uh they're not that bad. They're not that bad at all. So if you have previously watched my exposure blend tutorials then you should find this absolutely no bother. If you haven't then I would encourage you to go back and look at my tutorials on exposure blending. It's the way Jimmy McIntyre does it. I learned everything from him using apply image. You don't need any of the panels, so you don't need any of the Raya Pro. It's just apply images how I'm gonna blend these. Okay. So I have them um laid out from dark to light. So this is the darkest, which is gonna bring back just this area here of the sky. I have most of my mid-tones here in the sky, which is gonna bring back all this area, and then I have an exposure for my shadows, which is gonna focus on this area where all the nice light is. And Basically, I don't need a focus stack. I was lucky. Um, I was able to get sharp images throughout. So if you look here, you can see the rocks are nicely sharp. Okay, they're in focus. The infinity focus worked. Sometimes it doesn't, but a lot of time I don't bother focus stacking. Maybe down here there's a small bit out of focus, but that'll be cropped. So I'm not worried about that. So the first thing I'm going to do is blend these exposures. So with my middle uh, exposure made invisible, I'm going to put a white mask over it. I'm going to go to image, apply image, make sure the settings are the same, I'm going to click OK. Now, we have lost a bit of contrast, we've blended in the sky here, but we've lost a bit of contrast in the rocks here. And if I could toggle that on and off, you'll see. Now, there's a number of different ways I can bring this back. I can simply choose a black paintbrush, okay, and paint it back in like that, okay. But a bit more accurate is I can just target the mask. So if I hold Alt and click on the mask here, and then I hit Control and L, I'm going to bring up a Levels layer. And this basically is going to make the mask a bit more targeted. So it's just going to affect these areas of the sky here. Okay. So I'm going to click that. Okay, that looks fine. And we've brought back much of the sky, and we still have a nice bit of light here. Now, if you still have a bit of light missing, just zoom in, make your brush size a bit smaller, Click your layer mask, make sure your brush is black, and paint back in that sky there. As you can see, I'm bringing back the light, okay? Bringing back some areas where there was just nice light hit. I don't want to lose those areas. Very gently paint that in. Okay, zoom out, have a look at that. Um, and I'm just going to paint this here. Okay, brilliant. So we've brought back the sky. Now we still have an overexposed area here. Ooh, lovely dust spot there. We still have an overexposed area here, which we're going to deal with now. So make your dark top exposure visible. Again, a white mask over it. Not two, one. Go up to image. Apply image. Click OK. Now this will probably be very, uh, it'll apply a very old general mask. So you'll see this is going to go quite flat now, which it has. OK horrendous don't worry we'll fix that so again hold alt click the layer mask control and l or command and l now i'm going to make this really contrasty so i only wanted to affect this area here the brightest part because everything from white to light gray is going to be selected in this mask click ok now that's looking a bit better we've still lost contrast in our rocks here and in our sky as well so i'm going to paint that all back in it's only this area I wanted to affect it. So one large brush and I'm gonna do one sweep like this. And I'm gonna zoom in. And I'm gonna make my brush a bit smaller. Perfect. Just gently paint that back in there. Okay, zoom out, have a look. What we can also do now is just reduce the opacity of this layer. And that'll just bring it and make it a much more natural blend. So as you can see, we've brought back the highlights here in this area. Just to pass it a bit more. It's looking quite nice. Perfect. So that's our actual exposure blend done. So I'm going to hit Shift, Control, Alt and E. Make that into one layer. Now I'm going to convert it to a smart object. The reason I'm converting it to a smart object is... When I go into Camera Raw um, to edit it, that 
my edits will be saved in the within the smart object so when i go back into change anything they'll all still be there and i won't have to start again very important you do that so actually another important thing that you do before i do anything there is just go to image or sorry hit control and d or command and d you can do it if you have instant match just hit d select or else just hit control and d or command and d and that'll deselect any of the areas of the masks because if i didn't do that um when i painted in or sorry when i created a one layer here if i didn't deselect the uh area then all the edits i do in camera raw would only be applied to the selected area okay so just make sure you deselect the mask after you're finished exposure blending okay so convert that to a smart object into camera raw filter and now i'm going to do a bit of editing here in camera raw so first thing i'm going to do is bring back the detail in this sky so with a grad filter i'm going to hold shift so it comes down quite straight i'm going to bring down these highlights i'm actually going to increase the clarity because i want to bring in bring out the details and the textures in those clouds just like that i'm bringing on the blacks and i'm basically framing the top of the image here and i'm going to do the same at the bottom pull that down and i'm going to reduce the shadows a bit and just create a frame top and bottom okay now i want to introduce a bit of light here so i'm going to put a radial filter and just increase the shadows like that perfect bit of highlights beautiful now i'm going to go down to my color mixer yellows i'm going to bring back down towards the reds a small bit i'm gonna actually desaturate the blues look a bit too blue for my liking and i'm gonna darken the blues as well so that'll darken my sky and i'm gonna darken the yellows actually i won't because that's a bit counterintuitive what i'm trying to do here i'm gonna go towards my oranges i'm gonna bring them a small bit down towards the pinks make it look a bit more like a sunset i'm gonna saturate them there very very subtle changes the greens yeah we have a few greens there i can actually up the luminance of those just to bring out the light here it's hitting the green leaves of the grass yeah perfect um anything else i want to do here now maybe just up the warmth a tiny bit i'm not a fan of doing that here as you can see i've made absolutely no adjustments no global adjustments all this has been local adjustments so local adjustments are really really powerful okay i'm quite happy with that i'm going to click ok and you can see how we've changed it all through local adjustments radial filters grad filters no global adjustments okay good stuff right last thing i want to do here is going to filter and i'm going to use a nick collection if you don't have this nick collection don't worry it's not this is just a bit of kind of my own creative editing here if you don't have this it's fine you're probably finished the editing process at this stage but um uh, oh yeah the smart object just click okay now it's already kind of done what i wanted to do i wanted to apply a skylight filter okay so the skylight filter is what i want to apply now it's way too strong i don't want it to look like that so there's a number of different ways i could get over this i could just select brush so i could paint it in with a brush or else i'm going to use control points so if i hit control here i'm going to add a control point here basically the control points will only apply the filter effect to the areas where you have the control point in if that makes sense so i only want the sky effect i don't want the rocks to have this kind of purple hue on them and this is just making it look a bit more like it was shot closer to the sunset that's not too bad i'm going to add another filter here which is called pro contrast really really good filter i'm going to add some dynamic contrast and it just kind of corrects it for me perfect again i'm going to put a control point here because i don't like the way it's i want to try and keep these areas somewhat dark um because i don't want the eye drawn to the right or the left so just like that as you can see i'm just brightening these areas a small bit a bit down here you can reduce the opacities of these control points as well okay click okay i'm done in the collection so there we go um it's it's quite subtle but that's how i like to edit i edit in fairly subtle way 
All right, so now I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to call it Arden. Okay. There's a number of different ways you can do this. Whatever way you want to do your Arden, I'm just going to add a soft glow here. You could do this with a radial filter and reduce the clarity in Lightroom realistically. Okay, I'm just going to go to my Arden effect here in Raya Pro. You can also go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Okay. Show way you want to do it. I'm just going to add a re really soft light effect. So, click OK. And now I'm going to put a white mask over that. I'm going to hit Control and I to convert it. And I'm going to get a black mask, or sorry, a white or a white brush this time. So the black mask over. And with my white brush, I'm just going to paint a bit of art into this area. Just like that. If I zoom in and see if I toggle on and off, just softens it a small bit. I actually don't like the way it's been after being applied to the rock there, so I'm going to reduce that. Paint that effect back out. The same here as well. Paint that back out. Okay. Perfect. Control Shift Alt and E, put it onto one layer. Again, I'm going to duplicate this layer and call it DMB, which is Dodge and Burn. I'm going to go here and grab my Dodge tool. Mid tones. I'm going to select mid tones up here. And I'm just going to paint in another bit of light. For my dodge and burning. That's all I'm going to do. Just add a bit more light in here. That's it. Very simple. Last but not least, I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to go to other. And I'm going to go to high pass. And this is how I'm going to sharpen the image. So somewhere around there is good enough. And I'm going to create soft light. And then you can see it's quite harsh there. So I selected soft light for my drop down for my blend mode. Now it's still really harsh. So all you have to do then is just reduce the effect of that okay i should have actually put that onto a diff another layer because now i'm reducing the effect of my dodge and burning but look we live and learn so i'm just going to reduce the opacity to like get a nice sharpened image but it's not over sharpened and there you go toggle that on off very subtle very subtle but you see the difference okay and that's it. That is it. Hit Control and S. This document's currently been saved in the background. Okay. Yeah. No problem. So here we are in Lightroom. All I'm going to do now is just crop. Uh, I'll go for a 4 or 5. But I think I want to make it a bit bigger here in the sky. So just a there a small bit. Tiny bit of a vignette. Warm it up. No, no, don't like that warmth. And I'm going to just bring down the shadows a touch. And there we go. There's the photograph processed. And it didn't turn out too bad at all. So, hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned a thing or two in that tutorial. And yeah, until the next time, I'll see you soon. Stay safe.